Hello, 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 and welcome to the uh, the next in our perambulation through the discography of David Sylvia. This time is with his mate, his old mucker, Olga Zuge. Sylvian Zuge. This is a double pack. Kind of, I'm doing two for one here. You get you feel the feel the value of this one. You get you're getting two for one. Yeah, this is, of course, um, Pliant Premonition, Pliant Premonition, and a Flux and Mutability. And this is repackaged. Oh God, I think it's 2019 as well. I might be wrong. It might be a difference because they don't they don't put any they don't put a year on anything anymore. Have you have you noticed that on albums? They don't put the year on the bottom anymore. So I'm not sure exactly when this one was reissued. I think it was around the same time as as um nope. Nothing. Um I think it was around the same time that David Sylvian catalogue was reissued on vinyl. So that would have been twenty nineteen. It might have been twenty eighteen. I don't know why I'm thinking it's twenty eighteen. Uh, but yeah, they repackage both the albums into this de lovely deluxe um, double set. But we'll do a show and tell in a moment. Yeah, Plight and Premonition. Uh, these are two, uh, and Flux and Mutant Billy are two ambient albums. Ooh, or they've got it down here as Avant Garde. And these were recorded during 1986-87 so this was going on around the same time as Gone to Earth and um, Secrets of the Beehive so old old Sylvian he was he was a busy old bee wasn't he in his little beehive he was a busy old bee yeah and um, we have a number of people on this from the Krautrock oeuvre so of course you have Holger Zuki himself um, Jackie Liebeseit is there as well, and Carl Lippergas on this on the first record. Of course, I'm I'm talking as if it's one record, isn't it? It's two distinct records here. I'm talking about Plight and Premonition again. It's made up of two tracks: Plight, the spiraling of Winter Ghosts, which is 18 minutes and 30 seconds long, and on the B side, Premonition, Giant Empty Iron Vessel. 16 minutes 21 so yeah you're getting about 35 minutes of um background noise it's not again it's this everybody was doing this in the 80s though it come under um it come under new age who remembers new age music eh? who remembers new age now there's a genre that's died on its aris new age music it's very much new age uh, again uh, with ambient, with ambient music, you often think of like loops and the stuff that, that Eno does. And this isn't like that at all. This is, um, it's almost like soundtrack music. It's more soundtracky. You could imagine this being an imaginary soundtrack. You could imagine this being burbling in the, in the, in the background because it doesn't rely on looped, repetitive material. There is a sense in some of these pieces. Of movement forward you know there is a propulsion forward there is a bit of a you know you know it's not like Eno which can be a bit you know a bit see I'm now I'm, now I'm just using finger movements to describe what I mean it's a bit whereas this is a bit <laughs> fuck me Darren you really ought to quit this game you don't know what you're doing anymore but yeah, there is a sense of moving forward with this. <laughs> um, and yeah, and again, the tone palette is very reminiscent of what you have heard on Gone to Earth. You know, a Sylvian uses very, very, again, very, very, it is, it's a very familiar series of sounds here on both albums, on both of the albums. I know it's one album, but it's two albums. It's one, it's a double pack. Getting, you're getting confused, Darren. It's too complicated. Um, 
so yeah, you do hear certain sounds. He uses very certain um, like guitar sounds, and you know that you go, oh, mm, all right, because yeah, guitar play. He plays guitar on this. There's a lot of guitar. You know, people forget that Sylvian is a guitarist. You know, they often see him at his keyboard, but no, is um, you know, there's a, there's all manner of in instrumentation on this and. Again, whilst it's not going to knock your socks off, I think it's an it's you know it functions it functions as a soundtrack piece. I believe. Is it ambient? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's I think it's more than ambient. Like I said, because you know there is there is a sense of something happening, you know, unfolding, which you don't always necessarily get that with ambient music. Ambient music is kind of you know in the background. Whereas this is a bit more, like I say, soundtracky, and again, this is followed on with um, uh, Flux and Mutability, the second album, which was released in September, nineteen eighty-nine, fourth of September, which was re recorded over in Cologne uh, on December nineteen eighty-eight, and again we have Sylvian and Zukai this time with. Uh, Michael Caroli, Marcus Stockhausen, and Jackie Libzit, and Michi on the album. Um, again, there's radio noises, there's drones. You've got a bit of radio noise on the other one. Radio noise and that kind of thing is 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 one of their standards. Uh, you know these guys, Zuki and Co. And so that's used uh, throughout of this. Um, I think this one is a bit more detailed. This one has there's there are some bits on this which is almost melodic, you know. So of the two records, I think this has slightly more more detail. Um, but again, I always find I always find Sylvian's ambient music just a little bit more a little bit more detailed than say stuff by Eno. You know, I've always found myself kind of leaning in a bit, listening. You know, this it, it attracts my attention more. Whereas, you know, Eno says that you know ambient music should be just ignored. It should be just there. You know, it's like a a, a detuned radio. Um, it should be just kind of whistling along in the background. Whereas, with this, uh, there is, like I say, almost a sense of tension and release in some of this stuff, which. Again, I don't. I don't think that that necessarily makes it ambient. I think ambient is is very neutral. You know, is this isn't this this. There is a sense, like a sense, this sense of progression of you know stepping forward. So, you know, because I do think that, that again, I don't know how it was recorded. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall to find out how this was done. I do believe that they, you know, they add they add things to this rather than the you know way of doing things. I can stop going on about Eno. You know, Eno can't stand David Sylvian. Interesting, that, isn't it? Doesn't like him. I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, but yeah, so... What else can we say about this? Um, they're ones that, you should, again, I think even the hardened Sylvian fan might find a bit difficult to, to get through. I like ambient music. You know, it, it interests me. You know, so... I have an interest in this, and I do find it interesting to put it on. It makes me think, oh, how did they do this? I listen to it from a production side of things, and it's it's like, mm, oh, is that some is that something I could use? Is that a technique I I should use? So, I come in from a different a different angle. Would I recommend the albums? Probably not. Not unless you like, you know, the far out stuff. You know, <laughs> unless you, unless you unless you this is one of the, one of those records that you check out at the end. You know. But maybe check it out before blemish. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, I shouldn't have said that. Um But yeah, this like I said, we'll do a show and tell. We'll have a look at the old record. Um they they put them together in this nice double pack. I think this is really good. Um and again it's kind of matches the style of the of the whole reissue campaign. And that is a, a little essay by um, guitarist David Toop. Oh, 
I managed to, I, could, I couldn't turn the mic off in time. I, but I held that. I held that. I'm surprised my eardrums didn't burst. I still felt so very ill. Pity me, dear viewer. Pity. I'm not getting enough pity. If you pitied me more, I'd, I'd heal quicker. Give me your pity. No one's watching, so it's not, it's not working, is it, Dan? It's not working. But yeah, I think it's a nice. I think it's a nice set. Again, if you if you like if you like the old vinyls, you know, I think this is a. I think it's a nice little. Oh look! Did you see that? Look, there's a crumple. Oh my god! Look, I put a crumple in it. Oh my god! Send it back. And uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it's good that they've um, you know pulled pulled both albums together into this one collection. So yeah, a bit of an oddity. But if you want to hear. Sylvian's more experimental side with Zukai. There you go. Oh, you're saying it wrong. You're pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> what are you telling me for? I'm going to carry on saying it how I want to say it. And oh, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Oh, lovely viewer. Oh, lovely viewer. Thank you for watching. The one viewer that's going to watch this. I made this just for you. Just for you, dear viewer. I've been talking about Sylvian and, and Suki's. Um, Plight and Premonition and A Flux and Mutability I'm not doing the full titles of those tracks again it's far too long bit poncy bit bit, bit poncy in it but there you go and I think it's a good collection I think they did a CD version as well so you know if you don't want all the crackles and pops that adds to it that adds to the ambience doesn't it yeah no, maybe me anyway thank you for watching thank you for watching see you can go on and on and on about ambient music you can, if you put your mind to it. Anyway, thanks guys and girls. Mainly guys, because probably probably one. Just a, what, do you think a woman would watch this? Probably not. Maybe, ah, the Sylvia might, that might lure them in. That might lure them in. Lure them in. Prog on.